All right, we're going to look at some of the things I tried to do last time but didn't seem to work, and it seems like the issue was with the emulator and plugging it into the projector. Um, I knew it was working earlier, but of course that is the programmer's mantra, is it worked on my machine, or it was working earlier, or any variation of the, of the, of the following, of the preceding rather. So I'm going to look at the gravity property, and I want to look at more about layouts. I was late in assigning your next homework assignment. Normally I like to have them up at the very least by Tuesday of the week. Um, you know, the, the day that we have our first class of the week. Typically, I like to even be earlier than that, like have them done sometime over the weekend. Um, but I didn't, but this homework assignment, I think, is easy. Knock on wood. All right, so <laughs> so I think it'll ma I'll make up for it. All right, wait for this thingy to come up. If you remember where we left off last time, looking at this linear layout. And what I did, the last thing I did, and I want to make sure that that was clear, what I did. The last thing I did is I wrapped two of the controls inside another linear layout. And this linear layout I had uh, the orientation of being horizontal. All right? So with linear layouts, each of your views stacks vertically on top of each other. Now. For most applications, that's not really going to be like adequate, right? You're going to have you're going to want to have more than a column, a, a single column of of single views. You're going to want to have some rows in that have multiple views. So what I did is I wrapped the first text view, the label, and the edit text in another linear layout, which is ho oriented horizontally. All right, and uh, that allowed those two things to be side by side. So the overall layout is still oriented vertically, but the first view in that vertical stack is the linear layout, and those other two views are nested inside of that. So it's still going to put the first view on top, the second view underneath that, and so on. And I didn't do it with the other ones, but I could easily do that simply by pasting the code. This doesn't have it. Again, I love the one language I use has a tool to like neaten up your code because I think it's really important, especially when you start nesting stuff, to have your indentations match um, the way that the code is nested. So let me indent that over. that over. And it looks like, unless it's hiding somewhere, I got rid of this other linear layout tag, which I will put back in here. All right, so now when I run it, I should have four views, two rows, uh, two horizons, you know, on the top level, I have two views, two linear layouts. Each of those linear layouts themselves is comprised of two views, so now those will be those will be aligned horizontally. So, sure enough, that. 
that's what we have. And again, the gravity is center, <coughs> which means it's going to pull those things to the center. Now, obviously, you can't have four things uh, in the center, all right? Or you can't even have two things in the center. So that's why I say it pulls them. So if you look here, if you look at the screen, this is slightly above the center, probably, and this is slightly below the center. So it pulls those to the center. You could say gra uh, gravity right, and it will pull it to the right part of the screen. And there they are. Um, you have a whole bunch of choices here for the gravity. IntelliSense to kick in, and it doesn't seem to be. But I can go like center, oh, there we go, center vertically. So if I say center vertically, it's going to put it in the middle vertically wise, vertical wise, but not in the center horizontal wise. So it should be left aligned to the push to the left. And sure enough, there it is. If I make these things bigger, let's make one of them bigger. Let's make it 150 DIP. And I'm going to say Android. Gravity right. What that will do is that will pull the content over to the right of that text view. So notice the word hello in that label is pushed over to the right part of there. So again, that's the gravity aspect of this. Now the other thing I didn't, uh, I didn't have working last time was the text box. And again, I think it was an emulator-related issue because I did nothing. I went to work on it today to, to get things fixed so that um, we could pick up where we left off last time. And I did nothing, and I noticed that if I click on this, I get my keyboard, and I can type in there. And likewise with this guy here. So I don't know what was causing the problem. I assume it was some issue with the emulator. Questions about this? Now, linear layout is one of the kinds of layouts. Um, we saw another kind of layout. Um, with the tip calculator. Uh, not, my t not my tip calculator, but Deedle's tip calculator. And with that, we have the ability to sort of lay things out in a grid. And we can specify rows and columns. Let me bring that up just to spend a... I think I, I, think I did talk about that, but I want to spend a little, a minute longer talking about it. Actually, never mind that. I have, <coughs> I have it right here. Let me bring it. Let me open.
open up Deedle's tip calculator. Oh, it's already a folder. So I can go open tip calculator. If you get that error, just click OK. It's telling you that the path um, for this developer isn't the path that you have, which is fine. Just click OK and it will correct it for you. Now I go and run this guy after it does everything it needs to do. Usually when you download an application from another source, it will give you an error like that. Usually if you click it and download it or do whatever it asks, it will fix it. Now I'll go and run this. And if we look, go with our calculator. Now again, even though it doesn't look like it, this is really a grid. All right. Um, you can think of this as being having one, two, three, four rows. This is the first column. This is the second column. And this is a view that spans two of the rows, or I'm sorry, two of the columns. So, Let's go look at the layout for that. Notice that the layout is a grid layout. How many columns does it have? It has two. Use default margins and padding, uh, or use default margins, it has set to true. Padding it has as 16 dp. That is the padding. The padding is the space from the edge over. All right, to that. So you can put padding to sort of put things between a view's edge and the content inside that view. So if I put padding on on the edit text field let me actually change it to be Thirty-two DP. I'll change all of these to be thirty-two DP. That's 32 from the top, 32 pixels. I don't know. That doesn't seem right. I'll go and I'll go and do this on my.
my activity to show the padding. If I put padding on this text view, Notice how there's a big space around the text view. All right, getting back though to the grid layout. Layout column span is two. That's where it says that it goes across two columns. And this starts in column zero, so this goes across column one and two. The next text view, layout row zero. Layout column zero, layout column span two, enter amount. Um, that actually is like a, um, that goes over top of that to tell you the enter amount. And as you enter code in there, it's kind of weird to do it that way. I don't know why they just didn't set the text property of it to enter amount. But they didn't. They overlaid that on top of it. They probably did that to demonstrate that you could do that. them then um, have um, text views and it will assume that each one of them is because notice that there is no um, that there is no um, row or column on any of these so it will assume given that we didn't give it a row easily, easily I could column zero this one's an next row row column one. This one's in the next row column zero. This one's in the next row column one and so on. So that's a grid layout for you. The third kind of layout is a relative layout. And a relative layout is where you say things are positioned based on other things. So I went into here and I made a alternate layout file for when this is in landscape mode, all right? Which makes sense, right? Um, let's think of an example. Um, yeah. The calculator app uh -huh. on uh, iOS, when you rotate it sideways, it gives you a scientific calculator with more levels. Great example, all right? You have more things that you can do, so uh, you have more space, real estate, side by side, so you get a different calculator keyboard. Um, I was thinking something like maybe something that you would display as a straight list, you could display as two columns on, on that. If you had, for example, you know, and this is a simplification for your currency conversion, if you had uh, dollar 
dollars, then an edit text for dollars. Then you had yen, then you had a text for yen. Pounds, then a text for pounds. When you flip it on its side, you can make that two columns. So you have country dollars, yen, or, or uh, U.S. dollars, yen, and then the value in yen, pound, the value in pound, and so on down the line. So you might, you might be able to benefit that way. So how did I make this layout? Well, I go up here and say File, New, and I say I want a resource, a layout resource file. Um, Whenever you do this, you get, um, you know, you get a choice of what resource qualifier you want to have attached to that file. So if I pick a, I want a layout resource file, it's going to ask me what is the qualifier associated with that. All right. <clears throat> and when I did this, I did it with orientation, and I set that I had a. a resource file for horizontal orientation. I could pick locale, I could pick layout direction, I could pick uh, version of Android, I could pick uh, all these different choices. All of these again are resource qualifiers. What that means is the application will look to see if the conditions of that resource qualifier are met. If it is, it will use that file instead of the default. So I already did one for orientation, so I'm not going to do orientation again. I will pick night mode. When I go over that way, I have the choice of what mode do I want, not night or night. And then I could pick a different layout. So if my phone was in night mode, I could have colors that worked well when the phone was in night mode. If I, if I had not night mode, I would have a color scheme that worked for not night mode. All right? I didn't do anything terribly meaningful here. I just did this to demonstrate the other kind of layout. And that is the relative layout. When you create a, a file like this, it shows up in, the, in Android Studio with the name of the file there and the resource qualifier here. If you actually look out on your, on your, de on your disk, that file will be in a in a folder called layout dash land or layout dash fr if you did a French version of the layout if for whatever reason you want the layout to look different in France than anywhere else. Likewise, if you did a strings file, it would say uh, values dot dash fr. All right, so let's run this and let's let's rotate around. Now, when I was playing with this in my office, um, it seemed weird when I switched the orientation of this more than once. So let me try it and see how it works. So here I am, I'm viewing this application in portrait mode. So I got the big giant padding around it. Um, I have it centered vertic. I have the gravity to be centered vertically, so up and down wise it's centered, but by default it's pushed to the left. The relative layout is different, so let me rotate it. How do I rotate it? I can rotate it by clicking on one of these little things in the emulator. And notice what happened. It layout, the whole layout changed positions. All right. So in other words, when I rotated it, it no longer used activity main. It used activity main from the land directory, the landscape. Let's look at this guy. All right, relative layout. Um, the lay, layout width and, and layout height to fill parent. I have um, my first text view. I give an ID to it. I give an ID. I'm going to give an ID to all these things because I'm going to use these things to say where the other thing gets positioned. So my text view that says hello is the first thing on the page, so it gets put up in that corner. My second text view 
it says world, and if you look, it says that this guy is positioned below ID TV1. If I had a third text view, I could say I want it positioned to left, no, to right of. sure why it was in that order. To right of TV2. Underneath that. Interesting. Well, that one has to be puzzled. If anyone wants to use this, maybe they can work through to see how um, that works. But that's the basis of it. You, you define the positions of things to the left of, to the right of, uh, above and below. That's what I mean about rotating up more than once doesn't seem to work. Pardon me? Exactly. And if I do it again. Oh, there you go. You're right. All right. I'm not sure why that is not to the right of because it should be. All right, let's look at something on this phone. Let's go back, let's rotate around like this, and let's close this. And you'll notice on here, our applications. Oops. There's our dice game, had that as a icon, as an icon. Even if you install it, it shows up as being Twitter search have the little Deedle B as their icon. Okay? One thing that you should do is you should make an icon. And if you go on uh, the Android developer site, they talk about guidelines for a good icon. All right? One thing that we're going to do in future assignments is go make icons for ours. Your app does have an icon. All right? Um, but um, already, which by default is a little Android robot. But you can make your icon either from some clip art that's built into the, the Android Developers Kit or really any image. So I'm going to go out and I'm going to grab from my Hello World app, I'm going to grab a picture. One of the questions, will the world end on Saturday? 
I hope not. Okay, that looks like a good icon. One thing you should do is, even though this is an educational context, I am the only one that will see this. Um, you should put a note where you got your images from if you, in fact, did not create your image. So I'm going to save this guy. Save image as. Download PNG. Now, one of the things that's good to do is to make it not be a perfect square. So a PNG does have transparencies associated with it. I'm going to go into the GIMP and see if this is transparent or not. Okay, that actually has a, um, has a white border. So I'm going to go in and say, I'm going to add an alpha channel. I am going to select by color, I'm going to pick white, and I'm going to delete that. So now I have a image with the transparency. And I can go and save that. This isn't required for this course, but it's like good practice to do something like that. Now, I want to make a icon. So I can go under my app, File, New, Oops. and I can say I want a new image asset. And it'll ask me what kind of image asset do I want. Do I want a launcher icon, an action bar and tab icons, or a notification icon? In this example, I want a, uh, a, a launcher uh, icon. And here's my choices. It could be text, or I just have some text for it. It could be clip art or I could pick the clip art that I wanted, or I could pick from an image. And I can go and click that and find my image and select that, wherever it was. Users, Mzellers, Desktop. And there it goes, it creates the asset. Notice what it does for you automatically. It creates different versions of those. Why does it? Well, for the different screen densities. So it's creating, um, looks like five versions of that, um, of that um, icon. The extra, extra, extra high def, extra, extra high def, extra high def, high def, and medium uh, def. Looks like they got rid of low def from the equation. Now, I already have an icon, right? By default, there was an icon, and it's telling me it's going to overwrite that because I'm replacing the default icon, the little Android man, with this. And it shows me what it's creating. It's creating all, the, all of these in these folders, I can click finish, it's going to overwrite it. So now if I look in here, there it is. And I can run this, and when I run it, now if I look, That's the hardest thing for me to remember, is when I go in here, you scroll by scrolling along the side, that little gray area. Oops. Maybe, there we go. should be able to. There we go. Use the arrow keys. And there we go. This app I called Play. And there's the icon for it. All right. 
Now, we talked about this before, and a student brought in their tablet that I think we're going to go during lab and try to get uh, that working. Um, you can install this on a device that you have. Um, so you could go and install one of these on there. And when you disconnect it from there, it, the, the app will still be there. It will look just like a regular app. You do have to, ha have to set up some settings in your... Um, uh, in your device to make it work the way, the, to, to, to make it allow you to do development for it and allow you to install programs that you didn't buy through the Google Play Store. All right. Um, but compared to Apple, it's a piece of cake. All right. That's the good news here. All right. Um, next thing I said is I asked you to think of things that you are clear on and think of things that you're having a hard time understanding. Let's forget about the things that you're clear on because if you're clear on them, we don't have tons of time left in this class. We have enough time to, to probably go over some questions. The remainder we can save for next week. What is something that is still confusing to you as far as Android coding? Anyone care to volunteer? Yes. DIP versus SIP. Uh, I think I can give you the two second might be good enough answer. SIP is for fonts and it takes into account the default font size of the device. Now I'm going to Google it and see if I got the right answer. See how many points I'll give myself. Android difference SP and DP. What's the difference between blah, 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 blah? This one looks good. SP and DP define two different units. SP stands for scale independent pixels. D is density independent pixels. SP and DP are quite the same, except SP has an additional scaling factor based on the user's preferred text size. I'm giving myself the full 10 out of 10 on that one. I don't know what you guys think. All right. So in other words, DP is for images. SP is for font. Two devices with if you had a, a app that had a certain SP size, if you ran it on two different devices and the default text size was large versus small, it would look different because it would take into account the device setting as well. So that's really, in a nutshell, the difference between that. Other questions? Uh, I'm going to upload for next week an app that we're going to preview today and then we'll look at it. Um, we'll, we'll just preview it today and then we'll look at it in more detail on Tuesday. And this is a Twitter search app. And I always like to look at the app and, and see like what's new or what have we seen before and what's new. So maybe we could do some of that today and we'll do some of that next time. So let me close out of these two apps. I will post all of these to Canvas, by the way. Um, open. Desktop. Twitter searches. Okay, I'm going to run this. It's warning me that I already have it installed on my virtual device. So I'm going to go to my virtual device and uninstall it. Just drag it up to uninstall. And it's gone.
allows you to do a Twitter search and give a name to that Twitter search. All right. Um, let's pick a non-controversial topic. Uh, Donald Trump. Pardon me? Donald Trump. Let's pick a different <laughs> topic. <laughs> let's pick, let's say we might want to search out about Tetris, Pong, Galaxian. What's another old school video game? Space Invaders. All right, so that's my term, my search term. I can give that search term a tag, all right? Old school games. I can click this guy to save it. So now I have old school game, <laughs> old school games uh, tagged as a uh, as a Twitter search, and I should theoretically be able to go and click on that, and I can get results. And here we are. Here's results from Twitter, live. All right. I click the back button. It takes me there, and I could go and and. Um, Add other, other um, devices, you know, Browns, Cavaliers, um, Indians, Cleveland sports, and then do a search on that. All right. So, in fact, let's do that. Browns, Indians, Cavaliers. My tag for this will be Cleveland sports. I can save it. Notice it's alphabetized. I can click on this, and it'll do a Twitter search on Browns, Indians, and Cavaliers. Really? Yeah. No kidding. Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right. Now, let's look at what is different about this. Here's the two main things I see that are different about this. Number one thing that is different is, and it's not immediately apparent, but is this thing is dynamically created. In other words, it's not like there's three or four spots for Twitter searches. You can put in as many Twitter searches as you want, and this thing will just keep growing. All right? So if you had 10 Twitter searches, there'd be 10 things in this list, and you could scroll down if you wanted to. So this is actually, it's, it's a dynamic um, what do I want to say? The, the, the UI is dynamic. That is, it's not fixed at a certain size. The previous examples, we had a certain number of text boxes and, and uh, edit, edit text and text views and stuff on the page. In this one, our UI grows with new things based on what we do. All right? So that's one thing that's different. Second thing that's different is this calls another application. All right, when we click on that, it actually runs to Twitter and does that search. All right, so that's the second thing that's different from this. Yes? For it's saving your tag searches, if you, I noticed you had closed out of the app and come back in, the, the, the searches are there. What happens if you actually close it out of like your multitasking, like actually stop the app and then open it back up? Like does it actually save those? Yes. It does? Yes. In fact, it does, it, the only reason it didn't show the ones I were playing with earlier today when I was running this is because I had to uninstall it and reinstall it because it was griping about this. But, you know, let's simulate turning off our phone. All right, that's equivalent of turning off our phone. So it's not just like it went into, it went into inactive mode and it came back active. If I go and run this... Yes. I'm not sure what I'm answering yes to. 
Of course, there's a way to delete it. I don't remember if this app has the ability to delete or not. Oh, yeah. Just like a long press, though? I think. Did I do a long press? Yeah. A long press there. I could go in to edit it. I did a click. If I did a long press there, it would ask me if I want to delete it. Ask me, I'm, I'm sure. I don't want to, so I'll hit cancel. Or it asks me to share it. All right. I guess that's another thing that's different from this. This has some kind of persistent data. All right. Uh, if you remember our tip, tip app application, um, every time we went into it, it started with a fresh slate with the amount zero and uh, the, the percentage being whatever the percentage is, where this has persistent uh, storage. All right. You can download this. I will upload this to our site, or again, you can download if you just do Google searches for like the files for your textbook, you can find it. The one thing I want to show you, and this is this is a little bit confusing, so we'll spend a pretty good amount of time for this, is notice that. We have a shell of a layout. We have our content main, which is a relative layout. Here's our edit text, blah, 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 blah. And then we have a linear layout with a recycler view and we're going to add for each new search we have we're going to create we're going to use this layout to create the new line that we're going to add to that other view we'll review this all uh, on Tuesday um, if you get a chance between now and then download the, um, the the Twitter search application like I said I'll have it up in canvas and you can download it and, and play with it, look at it, and we'll talk about this in more detail on Tuesday. Are there any questions? All right. Uh, that's all I have.